Okay, we're going to continue the geotech homework solutions with problem number six. Saturated soil sample has a moisture content, water content, of 38%. The volume of the solids is one cubic foot. The specific gravity of solids is 2.73. We're going to complete a phase diagram worksheet and find the void ratio. Remember that's E, porosity N, and the unit weight. We'll find that on the phase diagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the phase diagram first. Uh, we'll start off, so this is going to be homework six, chapter four, number six. We're going to uh, start off with our givens. So uh, what we know every time we do a phase diagram worksheet, we know uh, our first three things, that the weight of air is equal to zero, that gamma air, the unit weight of air, we're going to assume to be zero. And our number three, uh, that the gamma of water is equal to 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So let's go ahead and put those into our phase diagram here. Step one, zero. Step two, zero. And step three, 62.4. All right, always good to start there. If there's anything else that was given to us from the initial problem, this would be a good time to write it down here. I see here that the volume of the solids is one cubic foot. So I can put that right into my phase diagram. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for number four. So that's the volume of the solids is one cubic foot. And I'll put that here for number four. And then that can also be duplicated for number five, because remember we write the volume of the solids twice. So that's number four duplicated, or however you wanna write that, it's up to you. Okay, so here we are um, in our phase diagram. That's all that we've been given that we can put right on the phase diagram, but we do have other information that we were given that we can translate into relationships here. So let's take a look at what else we know. Well, we know the specific gravity of the solids is 2.73. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down for my number six. That specific gravity is 2.73. And we can know from the phase um, relationships chart, um, if we go and find our specific gravity, we know it's a couple different things here. It's gamma S over gamma water. It's also the weight of the solids over the volume of the solids times gamma water, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this first relationship, gamma solids over gamma water, because I always know that gamma water. So let's put that here. So it's equal to specific weight of the solids over specific weight of the water. Like I said, I know what this is, so I'm gonna use that G sub S times gamma water, and that's gonna give me gamma solids, because I can multiply both sides by gamma water to get my gamma solids there. So like I said, my G sub S is 2.73. My gamma water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And so multiplying those together will give me my gamma solids. So we can go ahead and do that. 62.4 times 2.73. And that's equal to 170.352. But again, for our... Um, Our gamma, we're just going to use it to one decimal place. So let's go ahead and do that. 170.4, oh, can just about fit it in there. Pounds per cubic foot, I'll go ahead and use that abbreviation. And that will be number six for my gamma solids. Six, uh, 170.4. Okay. Um, and then as I write that down, I can kind of see right there that Remember that relationship up here, volume times unit weight times gamma is gonna equal weight. So right here, I can just multiply this right across to find out that weight of the solids there. So I will call that number seven. I'm gonna solve for the weight of the solids, which is gonna equal the volume of the solids times the unit weight of the solids. And that's just multiplying one times 170.4. So that's just 170.4 pounds per cubic foot. So I'm just going to put that right on there.
Oh, it's not pounds per cubic foot. Take a look. It's feet cubed times pounds per cubic foot. So it's just pounds. Okay, and then we'll go on to number, I apologize for the banging. There's some construction here. We'll go on to number eight and see what else we can solve from this. If I take a look right here, there's nothing that kind of comes easily from these relationships here. So I'm going to go have to go back to um, my other relationships and see what else I can use. I was looking at that information about specific gravity, and I saw that it has this other relationship too with weight of the solids over uh, volume of the solids times gamma W. Um, actually, I guess I know all that stuff. Gamma W. So that's not going to help me right now. So I'm going to have to go and find a different relationship. Let's take a look at what else this problem said initially. It does say that it's a saturated soil sample. So we can start using that information. Uh, if it's saturated soil sample, my saturation is at 100% or in decimal form, that's one. Going back again to my phase relationships, you can see you're just going to have to keep going back and forth with this. That's going to equal one. So in that case, the volume of water is going to equal the volume of the voids, which just like in the other problem, that doesn't tell us anything yet that these two are equal because I don't know one of the volumes, values, but it does tell me that the volume of air is equal to zero. And the way I can know that, I'll make that number eight. The way I can know that is remember the volume of the void is equal to the volume of water plus the volume of air. Well, if these two are equal, this has to be zero because there's nothing that can be added there that would increase this value. So these two have to be, if these two are equal, this has to be zero. All right, so if I know the volume of air is zero, information. Nothing quite yet, um, but let's continue on here and look at another fact that we learned from this problem, and that's that the moisture content was 38%. So let's write that down and see what we can do with that information. So water content is 38%, or I'm going to write it as its decimal form, 0.38. Let's slide that up a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at some of our formulas and see what that can help us with. So just my first formula here, the uh, water content is this relationship between the weight of the water and the weight of the solids. And that is going to help me because I know the weight of the solids, I know the water content, and I don't know the weight of the water. So that is going to be helpful. If I have three relationships here and I know two of them, I can solve for that third. So let's go ahead and write that down and use that relationship. So it's weight of the water over weight of the solids. In this case, I know this and I know this, so I can solve for that. I'm going to multiply each side by the weight of the solids. Those will cancel out. And I'll get that the weight of the water is equal to the moisture content times the weight of the solids. And let's plug in then. Weight of the solids is 170.4 pounds, and then it's 0 0.38. It's basically 38% of that is the water. So we'll multiply that 170.4 times 0.38. And I get 64.752, but remember it's weight. So we're just going to take that out to one decimal place. So we'll call that 64.8. And that's just pounds, 64.8 pounds. Oops, slide that down. And I'll put that in here for number nine, 64.8. Okay, now I can see that I'm going to be able to add some stuff up here because I've got this whole column filled in except for the bottom for the total. So I'll do that for number 10. I'll be the bottom of my page here. <clears throat> Number 10, I'm just going to add all these weights up to get my total weight. <clears throat> so weight is going to be weight of air plus weight of water plus weight of solids. And in this case, it's, it's always going to be weight of air is always going to be zero for us. So it's just 64.8 plus 170.4.
So 235.2, and that's pounds, and that is number 10. 235.2. All right. And again, I have to slide this one over so I can continue with my steps. I have to resist that temptation. I cannot add this gamma column up. That's not going to work to get this total gamma. So I can't do that. But I can go across here. So I know gamma water and I know weight of water. So I can solve for volume of water using this relationship here. So let's make that step 11. Let's solve for the volume of water that at the top here. Slide down. Okay. So remember I said volume of water times gamma water is equal to weight of water. And that's just using this base relationship here. I want to solve for volume of water this time. So I have to divide each side by gamma water. So volume of water and those go to one is going to equal the weight of water over gamma water. <clears throat> and in this case, my values are 64.8 pounds over 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And remember when we have that unit that's in the denominator of the denominator that comes up to the numerator for our answer, these two can cancel out. So I have 64.8 divided by 62.4 and that gives me the slice long number, I'm going to take it out to two decimal places for volume, so I'm going to use 1.04, and that's going to be my number 11, 1.04 feet cubed. And I remember back to number 8, <laughs> I'm going to slide back over here, that since the saturation ratio is 100%, uh, it's 1, um, the volume of water is equal to the volume of the void, so I'm going to go ahead and use that for number 12, that fact that the volume of water equals the volume of the voids, and that's all equal to 1.04 cubic feet. So that will be my number 12 here. Let me slide this over so I can put it all on the screen. There we go. And so you can see that too. All right, 12 is 1.04. All right, now I can see that I have some columns filled in, so I'm just going to have to do some addition straight down. So let's go ahead and find the total volume here. And again, I'm just going to add straight down here volume of air plus volume of water plus the volume of the solids. And that's uh, some pretty easy math there. 1.04 plus 1, that's just 2.04. And that's 13. And then we can just duplicate that uh, cubic feet. And then we'll just duplicate that for 14. Duplicate volume. It's also 2.04. Okay, so I'm just left with one blank to fill in. And that's the total unit weight, the total gamma. So that will be my 15th. And I know my total volume and I know my total weight. So I'm going to go back up to this base relationship. Volume times unit weight equals weight. V gamma equals W. I'm going to solve for gamma. So I'm going to divide each side by, by V, by the volume. Gamma is going to equal my total weight over my total volume. In this case, my total weight is 235.2 pounds. My total volume is 2.04 cubic feet. And when I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get 235.2 divided by 2.04. Uh, something nice and long again, but remember just one decimal place, so 115.3. And take a look at my units, it's pounds per cubic feet. And I'll put that in here, 115.3. Okay, excellent. So I filled out my whole phase diagram worksheet, uh, but I'm not done with the problem yet. So let's take another look. So one of the things the problem did ask was it asked for a unit weight. And remember, if it doesn't specify dry unit weight, water, air, or solids, that just means total. So we do have that. The total unit weight is 115.3. But now we want to find its void ratio, porosity, 
and, and add them here. We'll just use this one sheet. So, first thing I'm going to solve for is the void ratio. And I'll solve for that again going back to my chart here. Uh, since I have my phase diagram filled in, I can kind of pick my relationship to use, but I'll go ahead and just use this one here, volume of the voids to volume of the solids. So V, V over V, S. And just look up here into my chart. Volume of the voids is 1.04 cubic feet. Volume of the solids is one. So my void ratio is 1.04. And I should put the units there because those will cancel out. So that's dimensionless. Uh, I also wanted to find the porosity. So again, back to my relationship table here. Find a good definition for porosity. Remember, that's usually expressed in percent. So that's volume of the voids to total volume. So how much of that total volume is taken up by voids? Uh, so that's 1.04 cubic feet over the total volume this time, which is 2.04 cubic feet. And put that into your calculator. 1.04 divided by 2.04. Um, and so that's, again, it's going to be a whole number. So you can multiply by 100 to find the percent and then just round to the whole number. So I'm going to call that 51%. And then the last thing is just that gamma, but I already had found that, but I'll just rewrite it here. The unit weight is 115.3 pounds per cubic feet. All right, so I made my phase diagram, I listed my steps, and I came up with my answers. And like I said, you might have followed a different pattern here. That's totally fine. Um, some things you might start with water content or something like that, but in the end, you should have the same final numbers I have here for the homework problem number six.